DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. I look golden tonight. Is that a good thing, or do I look like golden, like like I'm um, like medium rare? Or wasn't something? wasn't there a, a an Eddie Murphy movie that it was like a golden child? There's there's a a, a golden. I, I maybe I don't. I don't know, but yes, uh, Keith, we do make custom sized power cords uh, with uh, nice high quality rubber SJOW type jackets. Professional. Uh, most of our power cord customers are uh, tours and arenas and stadiums and people who want a good power cord uh, it's going to last well forever probably you know and that's what we like thank you guys for joining us we are streaming out to facebook live and we're also streaming out to our insider dj and tv insiders if you guys would like to come and join us on these live chats go out to djntv.com go to the insider area and sign up at, just to keep up to date because that will get you the links to these shows so you can join us in the webinar chat where we are at tonight Ben, our first question was about power sources for outdoor sound systems like in a parade float. Our second one, uh, someone was asking about picking a sound system that's going to do a nice job to give you decent sound as you're going through the parade route. Envisioning kind of going down a main street of a, a town where it's probably, you know, the equivalent of like four or five vehicles wide and you've got people on the sides. How and what's going to be the best optimal sound system for that application? All right. Well, I'm shooting from the hip on all these, John. So some of these things might come out a little disorganized. But first and foremost, I'm going to act under the assumption that uh, all of our viewers are people who work in the, the sound and lighting industry professionally. Uh, I, I would guess predominantly that's who our viewers are. And so I think it's very important that your sound system sounds good. Uh, it, you know, it reminds me, we did a parade. We, we, uh, the city we live in is quite literally the first city on the Mississippi river. Uh, we can literally step across the Mississippi river. Uh, we live up here by the headwaters. And so we have a lot of things called first city and we have the first city of lights parade. And we thought, gosh, you know, even though, uh, November in Minnesota is not a fantastic time to have a parade. Uh, you know, it's sometimes it's even sub zero, uh, we said, you know, maybe one year we should do that. And so we thought if, if NLFX is going to do a parade with, with lights, it had really better be good. Um, and so we actually spent a few months building our float uh, in a part of the warehouse. And, and uh, we had a couple of universes of DMX lighting and programmed it all. Anyway, and, and sound was a part of that. You know, it's, it's all part of the sensory experience. And it was, it was really awesome because most other floats, and I'm not begrudging these people, but they're not pro audio professionals. Yes. Uh, you know, if, if a realty float has crappy sound, well, they're a realty company. You don't really care. I'm not picking on realtors, but you get the point. Mm -hmm. But if a sound company has crappy sound, you're misrepresenting your, your service there. And it was really great because we had this uh, float with multiple universes and everything was, you know, coordinated and programmed to the music. And we had a pretty rock and sound system. Uh, and it was just great. People's jaws literally were gaping open. They're like, what is that? Uh, by the way, we won best all around, uh, you know, so, <laughs> uh, and then we said that was really a lot of work. Let's never do that again. Uh, <laughs> but we might do it again here uh, one of these days. Interesting. By the way, we had a, we had to program a small show to keep the moving lights moving because the temperature was so cold. We were afraid the motors would freeze, uh, that they would bind up. So we, uh, just, even when the float wasn't moving, we had the moving heads just in a moving pattern. So here's the real answer to the what sound system should you use. Uh, I, I would say what you have, you know, I mean, certainly I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to go out and buy something different uh, just to do a float. Um, but I think it really is important to have, uh, you know, uh, you can get by with some small, uh, you know, 
small tops, uh, but I think it's very important to have a sub to uh, really fill out that sound. And again, set yourself apart from all the people that are putting boom boxes or, or you know, uh, with apologies to Fender, but Fender passports and things on their float. Put in a pro audio system and let people say, wow, that sounds like music. You know, uh, you want to leave a favorable impression. Now, being that a person's outdoors, uh, you mentioned having a subwoofer that would be going. Would you, again, imagine envisioning that we have people on both sides of the street, would you have one subwoofer or would you prefer to have two, one firing each direction? How would you handle that? Subs, by and large, uh, almost without exception in our industry, subs have an omnidirectional pattern. So one would almost certainly suffice. Um, you, you certainly don't need two subs for the directional purpose. You know, that sub is going to fire pretty equally, uh, you know, in, in a largely spherical pattern. Uh, now, tops are a different story. Uh, generally, the tops that we have are designed with some directionality to them. So we do want coverage. And, and um, we want to think a little bit about our neighbors here, too. We probably don't want to blast that sound ahead of us and blast that sound behind us. We, we kind of want to blast the sound out. Well, not blast, you know, but you get the point. Yeah. Uh, out to the side uh, so that people are experiencing your float with the sound. Um, but I think that also depends on the overall design of the float. Yeah, I've seen somewhere they have had, like on a, a for the front of the vehicle, and they've had speakers firing forward. And mm -hmm. then they had them on the back. And then when they were driving by, because one of the things I, I do in our local town is do I MC the parade as it rolls through town. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I have music, music. And then I'm they're they're going by. And it's like I hear virtually nothing as I'm watching. Them yeah, I, I, don't, I can't think of a reason why you would do that. It's sort of almost like, you know, you're, you're sort of encroaching on somebody else's time and space. You know, that float is going by, but they're hearing you and, uh, you know, uh, Unless there's a compelling reason to do that, I think, you know, be be a good sport and, uh, you know, let them take in your presentation and experience you in its time and its place. Uh, you know, again, why do we do a parade? Uh, I mean, well, it's fun, you know, and you get to throw out candy and you get to eat a lot of candy, uh, you, you know, but really probably it's a marketing endeavor. It's a branding endeavor. And so you don't want to leave a negative impression with any of this, you know, uh, and if you're, you know, sort of cutting into other people's time and space, you might leave a negative impression. Yeah, certainly. And you, you definitely don't want to do that because there's most likely other business owners and business people will will talk. Back and forth. Oh, Howie, Howie dropped the Doppler effect. Yes, Howie. I, you're my, my kindred spirit, my man. Um, yeah, we just kind of drifted into the speaker placement. Um, let's talk about speaker height when it comes to a parade. Would that matter? I've seen sometimes where, where people have put them up, speakers up on stands or up on a... a you know, cab of a truck and i've seen sometimes when the speakers have just been sitting on a flatbed trailer so they were about three feet off the ground does it really matter oh absolutely it matters uh but again i think it, it comes down to the intended purpose um most of the parades that uh i participate in or, or watch uh people are generally sitting or sitting in lawn chairs on the side of the street you know we stand for the flag and then we sit back down you know yeah uh and, and so, you know, the listening height is lower than, than, uh, typical. Uh, and, and, uh, generally if you take a trailer height and the fact that most streets are sloped by design to allow for water runoff, uh, you know, probably just putting it on the trailer is adequate. Certainly if you're on a semi trailer, you're at four feet up there on a, on a flatbed, um, you know, at, at standard dock height. So the other thing I would think about with speakers on sticks is one, you're probably shooting over your audience, uh, you know, not necessary. Uh, again, in, in my small city, maybe bigger cities, so you have to cover more area. Uh, but two, you have a stability concern now, you know, uh, we don't want that thing to topple over. I mean, the vehicle is in motion, even at slow speed. So I would just probably put them on the deck. Uh, you could certainly find creative and decorative ways to raise them a little bit off the deck of the trailer if you needed to, but I can't see where a full height speaker stand would be necessary. My two cents. Sure. Just checking. Uh, Reggie said. Uh, Reggie says he lays them on their side. Here's my deal with that, Reggie. The only concern I'd have with that is most uh, horn patterns in uh, portable PA loudspeakers are fixed, meaning the horn itself is not rotatable. And by design, you have a narrow vertical pattern and a large horizontal pattern. So when you tip it on its side, now you are sending sound into space and into the street, uh, and you are only covering a very narrow swath as you go by. Now, that's just you know thinking of the specs and shooting from the hip. 
my res- my other response would be, well, if it sounds good, keep doing it. Yeah. You know, and if but the, the the speaker most likely won't tip over and fall uh, fall off the hay rack or something and bounce down the road and be broken. Uh, yes, Scott, uh, Evox 12s would uh, would absolutely do a good job. Great choice. Uh, and uh, for those coming to Midwest DJ, we'll be representing RCF there, and we'll have some rock and show specials. There's the word from your sponsors. There you are. Uh, and Howie, yes, you were going to say that about your horn, but you have your own show, so butt out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love you, Howie. I really do. You know that, right? He knows that. Yeah, so. Uh, do we have any, have any <laughs> other questions about speaker placement? And then we're going to go into, we ended up moving, putting the two center what topics together. I did that by mistake. So sorry, it's my bad. Uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm just kind of responding yeah, to what you say. Exactly. And, you know, I did kind of did that. Enjoying my ADHD moment over here with the chat. So <laughs> I'm just checking. I'm there's a, watching some of the other chats. If you're out on Facebook live with us tonight, uh, we're not following those chats very well because there's three different streams going out to Facebook this evening. So that is too much for an ADHD guy to hope for, John. Oh my goodness gracious! It's, I, it's I need monitors. Every I need to be able to see all these chats. I have. I have. I've got devices down here because I've been following chats and such on on the mobile devices. So I have an iPad here that has one. I've got my cell phone over here that has another, but they don't refresh as as quickly as I would like them to. And then I've got the last one, which is, I believe, the DJ and no, the Distracting News one is up here. And then, of course, then there's the the chat, the main webinar chat, and then there's the Q and A chat here because there's two different things going on just within our our web. Our, our oh, Instagram. stop it! You're getting me excited. Oh, my goodness, there's a lot here. So, we'll uh, like be- a like a like a pig in fresh mud here. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Bet you didn't expect to see a guy with Star Wars posters behind him saying that, did you? No, I'm, not so I'm much, a, not so much. a farm kid. I'm as know? happy as a pig. In... Yeah. I, you know, I come straight from the farm. I really do. It's not a joke. I'm a farm kid, uh, but I'm I'm like that country song. I'm a high tech redneck. You know, I mean, Mayberry meets Star Trek, but it'd be Star Wars. You know, Star so. Wars. Yeah. No, no. Make sure you can. Uh, All right, we're gonna take a quick little break here. We'll be back for our final segment in this set of three. Now the show. Is- <laughs> 